So, um, just to open my, my Kazuya discussion here, I want to give my obligatory reminder that I do not structure episode releases around Smash character reveals, even though it totally seems like I do, because I just always happen to be like, hey, I, I have time to do an episode, and hey, another Smash character is revealed, although that didn't really work out for Steve or Sephiroth, I just want to point that out, I had to cover them later on, so you know, I'm just saying, that's pretty good evidence that I don't do that. Um, as always, we're going to talk about uh, things with Kazuya, like why is he a significant addition to Smash? Uh, we're going to talk about his move set, but in a less uh, traditional way than I've done it before, although I'm going to try to go into a, a, a pretty good level of detail. Uh, we're going to talk about his alternate costumes, any amiibo that were announced, and of course, the Me Fighter costumes. Did I even mention the stage? We're going to talk about the stage. Uh, too. So, um, Kazuya Mishima, he is our representative from Namco's Tekken series, which is just, it's, uh, well, the, the Japanese title is two words, Tek and Ken, Iron Fist, which of course explains uh, why the game is all about the King of the Iron Fist tournament um, that Kazuya and his family all uh, compete in, as well as all these other amazing fighters, including a bear and a panda, which is pretty neat. Um, so, I don't really want to get into, like, the whole story of Tekken. I think you can, like, find other videos if you really want to hear what it's all about. But, I mean, Kazuya himself is a pretty a pretty important character, considering he's part of the, the Mishima bloodline, and a whole big plot in the series is about you know, Heihachi Mishima and Kazuya fighting, and Kazuya having the devil gene from his mom, Kazumi, and how essentially Kazuya is uh, evil and has this devilish form, and him and Heihachi keep going in this, like, big feud to try to have control of the Mishima Saibatsu, and it's just, it's a whole big, giant, like, soap opera-y sort of story, uh, but it's, it, it's perfectly dumb and campy for uh, a fighting game. Uh, and you can even see references to that story in, uh, Kazuya's trailer, which I'm surprised I didn't actually do much, uh, writing about here now that I think about it. The trailer itself was pretty good. It was mostly CG, but of course it showed off gameplay as every, uh, Smash trailer does. Uh, with it starting off with Kazuya carrying Ganondorf and throwing him off of a cliff, which, if you don't know anything about Tekken, that probably seemed a little weird. Um, but one of the main plot points in the original Tekken is when Kazuya was a kid, Heihachi just threw him off a cliff. Now, we, we uh, it's revealed later in Tekken 7 on the PS4, uh, I believe it's on the Xbox One as well as PC, um, that the reason that Heihachi did that is specifically because, uh, you know, Kazumi had the devil gene and... Heihachi wanted to make sure, oh my goodness, does my son have this devil gene? So he throws him off the cliff, and the idea is that if he climbs back up, oh yeah, he has the devil gene. And this is going to become a whole giant problem. Lo and behold, it becomes a huge giant problem, thus we get the whole entire plot of Tekken. Um, and so we just see Ka uh, in, in Tekken 2, or no, actually at the, at the end of Kazuya's arcade mode in Tekken, uh, because of course, you know, Kazuya is pretty salty about uh, his father throw tossing him off of a, a cliff. We see Kazuya do the same thing to Heihachi at the end of his arcade mode. He tosses him off of a cliff. And then that becomes kind of a recurring thing. In Tekken 2, when, since Kazuya isn't, I don't, uh, for sure he's not playable at the start, uh, when, and instead of Heihachi is, when you beat Heihachi's arcade mode and beat Kaze, Kazuya, who's taken over the Mishima Zaibatsu, um, Heihachi throws Kazuya into a volcano. He just, he ups the ante there. What a great dad. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, we find then in Tekken 4, because we skip over Kazuya in Tekken 3, because we can assume that he's dead. No, he's actually alive. Of course he's alive. Um, and then we just kind of see this play out again in Tekken 7, uh, where Kazuya once more then throws Heihachi into a volcano. So, uh, in the trailer, Kazuya does that sort of thing to a bunch of Smash fighters. Ganondorf, Pit, uh, Min Min is one of them. 
Oh, there's a couple more that I'm just blanking on, but I really should remember. But the point is, he tosses five characters off of a cliff when you see him become more devilish in the process because he's evil. Um, so that's that's the trailer. Of course, the actual presentation itself is pretty good. There were actually weren't a ton of Sakurai-isms in it. They were back in the studio, uh, which, of course, was kind of sad for me as someone who has, uh, even though it's not obviously for a good reason, I've, I've enjoyed uh, seeing Sakurai's home. Uh... Uh, the, really, the only Sakurai-ism was toward the start of the presentation when he was talking about, like, there was someone from the heavens wanting me to get uh, Tekken into Smash. And you know, like, Masahiro, Masahiro, get Tekken into Smash Brothers. That's sort of his little, a little flair for the dramatic. And, of course, if you don't understand the reference to what he means when he's like, someone from the heavens, uh, that actually comes from uh, Nintendo's name because part of the name... I don't remember if it's the Nin, the Ten, or the Do. I want to say it's the Ten, actually. Um, in Japanese, means uh, heaven. Like, the whole name is supposed to mean something along the lines of leave luck to the heavens, which is appropriate considering they were a playing card uh, company at the time when they were founded. And, of course, what do you do in a lot of card games? You just kind of leave luck up to, well, the heavens. So, uh, the name works out. And so... Uh, the, the, the little joke makes a little more sense now, I hope, if you didn't uh, get it before. Um, but bringing Kazuya in could be seen as significant for a handful of reasons. Not just because, of course, it's uh, another Smash character and it's another third-party character. Um, you could continue... You could look at um, Kazuya's addition as um, continuing to uh, bring uh, the PlayStation into... Uh, Smash, seeing as the Tekken series has historically been a series that's primarily associated with the, the PlayStation. And of course, that's because the hardware that the original Tekken was built on was very similar, actually, to the uh, PlayStation hardware. So, you know, of course, you also have, uh, you know, other primarily, I would say, Sony-associated characters in Smash Brothers already, in Snake, Cloud, and of course, Sephiroth to go with him. Um... And you could all, I, I mean, I would imagine, like, if you, if the last character ends up being, like, Crash or Spyro, that just kind of completes the PlayStation sort of loop there, in that it's like, okay, even though obviously Sakurai can't really just say, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to get a, a full breadth of the gaming Hall of Fame in Smash, and I want to get, obviously it's primarily Nintendo, since they're funding the game, I want to get some, some PlayStation guys in here too, that's, that's kind of symbolically what I, you, you could argue he's doing in bringing Kazuya, since you have um, Metal Gear Solid, a Konami franchise that's primarily associated with so, with the Sony PlayStation and Smash, you have Tekken, a Namco franchise that's primarily associated with the Sony PlayStation and Smash, and, now, and then you have Cloud and Sephiroth, from Final Fantasy VII, which, while well, Final Fantasy, I mean, I would argue nowadays it's more associated with the PlayStation. It did start uh, on the NES, and it certainly had uh, many uh, n n Nintendo games in the past. Uh, Final Fantasy VII, in particular, is pretty widely considered the quintessential PlayStation game. So, uh, But if you don't want to look at it quite that, you know artistically, uh, symbolically, you could just look at it simply as adding Kazuya continuing to complete the fighting game uh, loop Sakurai seems to have started with Ryu. Because now you have Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter as like the original, we're the fighting game characters in Smash Brothers characters. And then you have, you had Terry added, uh, geez, now at this point, almost two years ago, uh, representing the King of Fighters slash Fatal Fury. He's listed as Fatal Fury, but uh, I think uh, more people probably associate him with King of Fighters. And now you just you have Kazuya from Tekken. So all, all you need now to really close that loop is to add at least one character from a Western fighting game. You could go Killer Instinct. You could go Mortal Kombat. Those are really the only two major Western fighting games that I can think of, unfortunately, that aren't, like, a DC fighting game, like Injustice, that I think NetherRealm, who makes Mortal Kombat nowadays, uh, also made. Um, and, I mean, you could just look at Kazuya being added as just adding to Namco's representation if you're looking for some significance to him as a character, um, since now Namco is not just alone with Pac-Man. Now it seems like 
I think every, well, probably not every, but a lot of the third party um, uh, companies that have characters in Smash now have two representatives. Sega had Sonic, and they own Atlas, even though Atlas gets separate billing for Joker from Persona 5. Uh, there's, of course, for Capcom, you had Mega Man, and then Ryu and Ken. I guess technically they have three. Uh, you could even consider Bayonetta actually a third Sega rep, since Bayonetta was originally published by Sega. Uh, and, you know, Konami had Snake, and then they had, um, Simon and Richter from Castlevania added. Uh, so, and now in this case, you're just kind of closing that Namco loop, and now they have Pac-Man and Kazuya. And you, you could even bring Microsoft in this into this, too, now that there's Banjo and Kazooie, as well as... Uh, Steve from Minecraft, since both Rare and Mojang are uh, owned by Microsoft. So I just I think there's a lot of ways you could look at Kazuya as a uh, significant character, but I know that's not something that matters to everyone. People just want more Smash characters, and you know what? I I, I am mostly with them, but I can't say that it isn't fun to speculate about like, oh, uh, I want to read in the tea leaves and see like why why could we consider this character an important enough character to be in Smash Brothers? Uh, but uh, let's move on to some more concrete information like I always talk about the move set. Um, but this time I'm going to elect to just skip all of the regular moves because Kazuya's move set is too complicated for my tiny non-fighting game player brain to comprehend. So I remember seeing a, a, a an article come out from Event Hubs that just basically had an image of, hey, here's how you pull off all of Kazuya's moves, which Sakurai covered how to pull off all of Kazuya's moves, and there's so many, like, you know, you have to hold the stick in a particular direction and hit, like, A twice, and then you want to do it a third time, but slightly later than the second one, for example, and that's just, you know, I can't remember all that, and, you know, I, I've been playing Kazuya since he was just released the day after um, Sakurai's presentation uh, last week, June 28th, and for the most part, for me, I just kind of feel like I pull off Kazuya's moves randomly, unless I'm trying to do a special or a grab, because there's just so many regular attacks that I just, again, my, I'm not used to playing fighting games, I have a tiny fighting game brain, because I have not really played them, um, so it's hard for me to remember how to do them all correctly, or just pull them off because of how uh, the regular schmegular uh, pro controller or Joy-Con control sticks are on the Switch. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there there is some news coming up. The CPU seems to be pretty overpowered, at least for sure, at, when they're playing at level 9 as Kazuya, and that's, that's probably because the CPU, because they don't have human brain, uh, they know how to effectively use all the moves, and also I guess they don't have to really worry about the control stick uh, at all, unlike us. So if level 9 Kazuya uh, CPUs are giving even pro Smash players trouble, I can only imagine what the level 50 Kazuya amiibo figure uh, could end up doing to uh, players. Um, though if I, if I know there's one thing about Kazuya's regular moveset that sticks out to me, uh, it's kind of like how, like, Steve, Kazuya has these super short regular jumps. He can't even... Again, just like how Steve's single jump can't reach the lowest platforms on Battlefield, Kazuya's can't do that either. Um, at least for sure his first jump is super short. It seems his second, his double jump and his, of course, his up special uh, give him a lot more vertical movement. And speaking of specials, I guess we could move into those for his moveset. So one of the things that Sakurai pointed out in his presentation is that all of Kazuya's specials transform uh, Kazuya temporarily into devil form, um, and he has four moves, the devil blaster, the devil fist, the devil wings, and then the only one that is not listed with the word devil in it, heaven's door. So the devil blaster is Kazuya's neutral special, and he essentially just kind of shoots a beam of light in front of him, and it can pass through uh, multiple opponents, but as it passes through, uh, like, the first fighter will be damaged 15%, and the second one will be 12%, the third one will, it'll just keep decreasing until the beam eventually, uh, runs out. Uh, you can also 
angle this shot. So if you have somebody in the air, you could shoot the beam upward. Or if you have somebody who's climbing up a ledge, you can shoot it downward toward them instead. Um, and like many projectiles, the Devil Blaster is subject to uh, a lot of the other moves. Like Villager can pocket it, it can be reflected by Fox, uh, all sorts of things like that. The Devil Fist is a bit interesting in that... I'm trying to think of a move it's similar to. I want to say it's kind of like Wolf's side special. Uh, Devil Fist is Kazuya's side special. Um, Kazuya just kind of charges forward in whichever direction he's facing, left or right, uh, toward the opponents. And when you use the attack on the ground, um, the attack actually electrocutes and stuns the opponents for a bit, kind of kind of like um, Ryu and Ken's down special does, uh, assuming that the opponent isn't shielding. Uh, but when it's used in the air, the opponents the opponents will just kind of get knocked around. They won't get stunned or anything. So it, it's actually I've found to be kind of a powerful move too. Like not extremely powerful, but it it does pack a little bit of a punch. And then the Devil Wings is up special. It's just kind of a I've found it to be a pretty standard recovery move, you know, they, the wings help Kazuya rocket into the air, and he could just move left and right, and of course that's very helpful considering his jump is pretty not that great. Um, but apparently you can use it up against opponents on the ground too, in a similar way to like Luigi's uh, super jump punch can be used. I don't think it quite, I, I don't know if it has the same mechanic that Luigi's super jump punch has that there's a chance it'll go and just instantly KO an opponent. And then Heaven's Door is uh, Kazuya's down special. And the way that it works is he essentially just kind of goes, Hur! he tries to like, uh, it looks like a punch, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a grab. But it works kind of like Bowser's side special and that Kazuya grabs him and then goes, Boom! Down to the, the, the ground with the opponent. And again, like Bowser's uh, side special, you can use it, that move actually to, well, try to do a, uh, a sort of like a, a kamikaze sort of KO. Because a lot of times that you'll see people do with Bowser is he'll grab them. And since Bowser has the opponent underneath as like a body slam, he will throw the opponent off of the edge with them. Uh, but of course, the opponent will KO first since they're under Bowser, and that thus Bowser can win the match. Whereas for Kazuya, Kazuya's actually lower, so he reaches the blast zone before the opponent, which gives them a chance to escape and recover back to the stage. It's kind of a, a high-risk move, and of course, like with Bowser's side special, uh, your opponent can also try to escape it as well. Uh, but that covers the specials. As far as the grabs, I, I think they all have something special. They probably all have some kind of a special name. But really, all I care about in discussing is that, hey, they all actually come with a special camera angle. So our most grabs, just, you know, throw forward, throw backward, up, down, etc., etc. For Kazuya, the camera will actually zoom in to a particular special angle, and then you'll see him perform uh, the throw in whichever direction he's choosing to throw. And then the match will just continue as normal. So I just I just find that pretty interesting. I haven't really tested that out in uh, three to eight player Smash. I know for sure the camera does that in two player Smash. I would assume it does the same in three to eight player Smash. Um, but I'm not entirely sure how that would be pulled off as far as would the whole match zoom in on Kazuya for a moment, or do they just save that until they're only uh, Kazuya and one other fighter left. I'm, I'm not sure. I just, I haven't, I've not seen that. Uh, another unique mechanic that Kazuya comes with is Rage. So there's actually already a Rage mechanic in Smash, uh, but all that really does is that's, like, that's when you see the characters kind of smoking and, a, and glowing red, and it just increases their, their damage, because they're upset that it's like, I'm almost gonna die, because I'm over 100%. Um, but in this case, uh, Kazuya enters that same rage state when over 100%, but his name also uh, flashes and uh, his uh, attacks deal 10% more damage. Um, 
which that that actually already is a mechanic in the Tekken games when when a when a, a character is almost down. Um, but Kazuya also gets the Rage Drive move, which can be pulled off a few different ways, just the grab with trying to use Heaven's Door, the down special, or um, doing the quarter circle forward motion that you use for Ryu's Hadouken. Um, and so, in, but instead of performing Heaven's Door, uh, he performs a Rage Dive, which just functions the same, but it's significantly more powerful and is, has a much greater chance of KOing an opponent, of course, than a regular Heaven's Door move uh, would. Though, of course, if Kazuya can't connect with his Rage Dive, uh, his Rage just ends up getting squandered, and he goes back to standard damage and doesn't have uh, access to his Rage Dive uh, until he loses a stock to try to uh, use it again after he gets over uh, 100%. Uh, so that, that covers Rage, there's his final smash. His final smash is the final blaster, uh, which of course is related to his regular Schmegular Devil Blaster. He just kind of shoots a beam in front of him, and like with many other sm uh, final smashes, that beam has to connect, otherwise the, the attack will uh, not continue. And after that, he just kind of shoots like a giant barrage of different lasers that can capture opponents in them and will knock them back a, a pretty far amount. And there's the cutscene of him starting the the final, the, the, the extra lasers, and he says something that I think translates to, This will be your burial ground! Uh, something like that. So, uh, as far as other little details from the presentation I want to cover, I think the alternate costumes are actually pretty interesting for Kazuya. Half, all of the odd number alts are is just plain fighter pants in different colors. Some of them have references to different Tekken characters. I don't know Tekken well enough to uh, state exactly like, oh, uh, alternate number five is a, re uh, is a reference to this particular Tekken character. I just, I don't know. Uh, whereas the other, the odd, uh, or not the odd, uh, I just talked about the odds, the even number costumes are all suits, uh, which is a reference to him at times leading the Mishima Zaibatsu and leading like other corporations and like guerrilla armies and stuff. Tekken's a weird story. Um, but the point is he gets to wear a suit sometimes and all the different colors are references to particular things. I particularly love uh, number eight, the golden suit, which I kind of made a reference there to a certain movie, um, but I'm not going to quite go all the way with that because I don't need any copyright issues on any episode if I can. Uh, the stage that Kazuya came with is the Mishima uh, Dojo, not the Zaibatsu, the, it is the Dojo. Um, and I have to admit, this might be the first DLC Smash stage that I'm kind of disappointed by, actually. Uh, because I feel like Sakurai was essentially going for a King of Fighters stadium uh, scenario again. Because the way that the Mishima Dojo works, so it's all a flat stage. And you have Heihachi in the background reacting like things that are happening, of course. Kind of like how the, all these um, characters do in the King of Fighters stadium. And um, the walls on the dojo can break down. And of course that will force characters outside to try to have to recover. And of course if they can't get over the wall... If they only the top half is gone, then they're going to have troubles getting back on stage. Um, but I've kind of found that that doesn't really do anything all that special in my experience. Maybe I will feel differently the more that I play the stage, but just so far, essentially being flat and the walls not really being all that special compared to what you saw in the King of Fighters stadium, the Mishima Dojo may genuinely be the first... Uh, disappointing DLC smash stage for me. And, and you know, I mean, eventually there had to be a stinker. It's just kind of upsetting that it's the second to last one that we just couldn't get uh, all 11 uh, fighters past characters with pretty good stages. Then again, I can't say I love all the stages. Garag Mach Monastery is and all that amazing, and neither are the clouds of all rest. Uh, but I do find uh, for, I think, I just I think Mishima Dojo could have been more fun if it went for a King of Fighters Stadium uh, approach to its use of the walls, but 
it is what it is. So it's it's still fun. It's still interesting. It's just it's not my favorite stage. I will probably still pick it though, if only because I just tend to find myself gravitating toward the new DLC stages. But uh, that is what it is. There was one new amiibo figure officially announced in the Kazuya presentation. Of course, we have now finished all of the Fighters Pass uh, one amiibo figures. I have. You can't see them, but Joker and Ha, uh, I was gonna say Hazia. Uh, Kazuya doesn't have one yet. Hero are hanging up up there, as well as Terry. I don't think Terry's quite in frame, but behind me, uh, somewhere along this wall, uh, that my audio listeners also can't see, but somewhere behind me on the wall, there is also Banjo and Kazooie and Byleth. So all of Fighters Pass 1 is complete. Uh, so now we have to start moving on to Amiibo figures for Fighters Pass Volume 2. And of course, the first one to be created is going to be Min Min. And I just, I find it exciting, not only because I like Min Min as a character and I like arms, but that means that Min Min is going to be the only arms character that actually has an Amiibo figure, which I just, I find fascinating because I honestly, when arms was announced in 2017, I thought it was going to be a shoe-in sort of game to have uh, Amiibo support in a similar way to what uh, Smash itself has. So, you know, it better late than never on having an ARMS character getting an Amiibo figure, but I don't know, I'm just still kind of surprised that ARMS never ended up getting any Amiibo functionality. And I mean, I guess that's really all that's there. I just, I, I am ready to continue my Smash collection and hopefully, like, I'm about like, less than 20 away on the Smash series, I think. So if I can keep getting these new ones that come out, I will continue to stay on track to just have to eventually go back for all of the, uh, uh, non, or, I uh, just have to go back for all the ones that I'm missing is really all I'm trying to say. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about here, of course, in the Smash presentation are the Me Fighter costumes. This time, it was, it was again, kind of sad, similar to, uh, man, I'm just struggling to remember. There was another time where there was actually not that many costumes. Like, I've kind of gotten used to there being at least six to eight, and this time there were only four. Uh, they include uh, all characters that have been long requested for the Smash team to add to Ultimate. Um, but ultimately ended up not being able to be fit into the game for one reason or another that Sakurai was just like, I still want to represent these characters because th I guess the whole idea of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is really trying to um, fulfill a lot of dreams uh, for folks. You can just kind of see that already with uh, Simon and Richter and King K. Rule just being characters in the game in the first place. Um, but they, uh, the, the characters that got represented now are, um, Lloyd from Tales of Symphonia, which, I mean, is significant, but I just want to remind everyone, this is actually another returning DLC costume from, uh, Smash for Wii U in 3DS, so it really isn't new, because Lloyd's costume could have just returned, especially with Namco Bandai already working on developing Smash Bros. Ultimate, I don't get it, I don't get it. But whatever, it's, it's still neat that he's there. Uh, we also have... Okay, so uh, first, Lloyd is a, a sword fighter, which makes sense with Tales of Symphonia being an RPG. Uh, another sword fighter we have is Dante from the Devil May Cry series. So, of course, he had to see many jokes come out uh, when that was seen. Of course, there's sadness that Dante is not the character, and that kind of quashes all those leaks that have people have just been uncritically reporting on about Dante is going to be the next, uh, going to be the next Smash character, and then it never happens, and now he's a uh, DLC Me Fighter costume again, kind of getting back to what I just talked about with the Game Boy Advance screenshot in my intro here, folks. Um, but now he he is another Sword Fighter costume. Uh, we also have a Sword Fighter costume for the Dragonborn from the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, uh, which is just interesting. That's another, I mean, we already had the Vault Boy from Fallout, so Bethesda already had some representation. Now we have Bethesda coming back again with the Dragonborn. And then finally, we have a costume for Shantae from... Well, Shantae, uh, and actually Shantae, so she's the only brawler character in this group uh, of costumes, and she comes with a special music track like some of the other costumes, like Sans did and uh, Cuphead uh, did. 
Um, and you know, it's funny. I just, I remember all these segments before where I was like, man, I keep covering these Mii Fighter costumes or all the Sword Fighter costumes. It just seems like they're doing all sorts of other ones. And now I kind of have to flip that before uh, we get to this final pack here and start asking, where the heck are all the Mii Gunner costumes? Because there wasn't a single one in this one. I, I mean, it's been a while since Pyra and Mithra's um, reveal. I don't remember if there were any Gunner uh, costumes there. There very well might have been. Um, but... I just, now it seems like with this one, you have 75% of the costumes being sword fighter. It's like, man, now maybe the sword fighter actually is getting a little, a uh, few more extra costumes. So it, it, I don't assume Sakurai was listening to me, but hey, good on you, Sakurai, for listening to feedback, even if my feedback didn't actually reach you. So uh, that covers what I had to say on Kazuya. So I think... We can move on to our next topic, which is what should the Wii U legacy be?